So, singing enemies over the network. Okay, we have them over here. You can see they are synced, everything works just fine. Behaviors run as they should, as you can see, and everything else. And we can throw grenades, and everything else will also sync too. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, yeah, the corpses might not look at the same way, but it doesn't matter since, you know, they are dead. Now, uh, enough with this. Keep in mind, of course, that you can do improvements of your own, of course. I expect it to have a few bugs here and there, uh, but yeah, overall, it works just fine. Now, uh, the important stuff first, on your lobby scene, because the enemy AI will only run on the server, okay, there's no point in running the AI on the clients because only the server is going to, or the host in this case, will only uh, need to run uh, the enemy AI. Okay, and based on what the server uh, is doing, we're going to be updating all the clients. Now, because enemy AI only runs on the server, as I said, we need to have a different way of spawning enemies and we're going to have that way of spawning enemies is going to use some of the UNET magic uh, well I say magic but it's ironic now what you need to do is go over here on your lobby manager where we have created and on register spawnable prefabs you need to add the enemy controller for the multiplayer which we're going to see uh, right now okay however because there is a bug and if you add something in this list and hit save and I'm still in unity in unity 5.4 so yeah this might fixed in, in unity 5.5 I don't know okay because there is a bug that uh, if you add something over here and whatever you do it doesn't save the list you have to also untick something else and uh, do a manual save so what I did is simply come over here untick and tick again the auto create player and then save change the scene throw save again go back and if it has the the prefab into the resistors spawnable prefabs in th inside this list then you are golden okay back to the main scene and let's see the new uh, controller okay enemy controller multi it has the enemy AI which is going to run by itself we have the state manager of course okay handle particles network identity and you can see the way it is the enemy AI multiplayer which is going to to be what runs this the enemy AI and network transfer cycle collider to D and rigid body to D okay and of course we are syncing the rigid body to D okay uh, that's the other thing because I'm sure I'm going to forget on multiplayer session come and tick local player authority okay uh, and now we're pretty much ready to go and see the script. So the new script we're going to see is on the AI enemy AI multiplayer and it's going to be this one. We need all our uh, you know all our namespaces and we have sync variables. So what this sync variable is is uh, whenever a, a server the server or this variable updates on the server we're going to update them also on the clients and the nice thing with this is that you can also add a hook over here okay so whenever you update something uh, or the server updates something it's going to run this function on the on the clients basically so for instance we're going to have variables or like this boolean or the move or basically all our variables 
that we have on the state manager not exactly the same variables we have on the state manager and we only do it this way because the state manager updates by itself okay so uh, we're just going to create a few more variables so for instance previous move so what we had on the previous frame okay if this changes on the server then it's going to go and run the move function which is down here and it's going to run it on the clients again we need to update the previous move move to what we are passing because this runs as I said on the on the server this will run on the client so we also need to update the previous move for uh, to the client okay so we also need to update the stage.move and the states run the state manager runs its own update so it's going to update everything else uh, that needs to update based on the values we're feeding on the state manager okay so let's take it from the start enemy id you can guess what it is the character id also you can guess what it is okay it's just some variables i think character id we're not even using it so let's delete it or better yet let's do the smart thing and comment it out because we are using a lot of this okay a lot of hooks you can see that you cannot use find reference final references because it takes it as a string okay we have our position and our id state manager and our enemy i now we're going to add previous look left previous move previous jump previous special previous shoot previous on ground previous crouch previous dead previous left basically this is everything we need to update over the network okay and each one has its own functions so let's see the functions first since that's pretty much where the meat of it, where the meat of it is okay on ground these uh, functions need to have a signature and the signature needs to be the same as the variable you're passing of course okay so that means everything is a boolean at this point if you were syncing an integer then you need to sync an integer so on ground bool on ground previously on ground on ground states on ground the same with the look left the same with move okay jump special dead crouch left pretty straightforward once you get how the whole thing works then uh, yeah it's really easy to do just keep in mind the quirks that unit has and the bugs of course the bugs we can't forget about the bugs okay so this is how we are going to sending information on to our clients now on start since we do not have anything on enemy AI, and that's why on single player we use a hook that runs the init and the update of course okay and we're going to ignore this yeah we've seen this on the previous video back on enemy AI multiplayer on start we, we get the reference now we're going to see that if this isn't the server then we're going to initialize the AI and that basically means we're simply going to update what we have synced over the network so for the X, Y and ID we're passing what we had on the network and we're going to go on our map controller we're going to find of course with the singleton we're going to add into the list and we're going to go and actually create the character we're going to call to create the character from the enemy AI okay and we're going to initialize the AI even if it's not uh, on the server and we're also for the clients we're going to set the states as dummy and we're doing the states to be dummy because if you remember inside the state manager we have basically inside the fixed update we had these functions so what this was doing was searching for ground was searching yeah, it was using the drag okay handle movement and handle jump it was doing that already 
if we do not make this dummy it's going to run also this these functions so what essentially what it's going to do it's going to go and update again our variables we have over here where which we sing over the network so you can guess that uh, we won't get an error we won't get uh, anything in the console we're just going to see wrong behaviors because uh, the what has on the server what we are updating on the server what we are running on the server okay because we find on which state we are and which one of these turns true or false everything is handled by the AI the AI is only run on the server and we update it on the clients if the clients run their own AI behaviors then that means we have we are not basically syncing okay and that's why we need to set it as the dummy and that's why we had it in the first place okay as you can see we are using a lot of scripts because of the way and the structure we have made it and that is the benefit if you know what the project is going to be about and you plan ahead okay you can do this will work uh, this way because okay I knew from the start I want to have the multiplayer so I made it this way back to enemy AI multiplayer the start is simple Init AI again, we've seen this, and basically on update, what we need to do is uh, if it's not the server, then it's going to return, it's not going to run the update, and if it is a server, then it's going to go and update the enemy AI again, the tick is the update, and simply pass previous look left, previous move and it's going to update them this way it's going to take what uh, the state manager has again the state manager updates from enemy AI and we pass the values over here and if something of this changes then we're simply going to run again the hooks we have on our sync variables okay so basically that's just it we are under 50 minutes and we have added multiplayer However, of course, it's not like uh, simple as that, obviously. Okay, we still need to do one more thing and that is because we have a level editor. And because we have the level editor, okay, we need to load enemy positions, what type of enemies we're passing and we need to pass and we are passing all that from, uh, the, from the network because, you know, the clients do not have a level technically okay we are passing it we are passing the level over the network so to do that if you remember we're going to go on to our map creator we're not going to add something new we do not need this on a loading we are over here okay if you remember on uh, load the map the actual map we had if we weren't or multiplayer and only then we were creating the enemies now we do not need it we still want to create enemies even if we are on multiplayer so what we need to change next is on place enemy go to definition okay inside the level editor we pass the function and if it's not multiplayer then we're doing what we were doing what we were already doing okay inside the enemy container we also need to go on the decision master on the resources manager and add the enemy controller multiplayer do not forget to add this okay otherwise yeah, if there's nothing to there's nothing to spawn basically we were doing we were already doing this so we're just going to add a new statement and if we are on the multiplayer and the network server is active then we're going to create uh, we're going to find of course first the container we're going to create the prefab to instantiate it we're going to place it uh, on the node we have loaded we have our enemy AI okay 
I mean X, Y, ID. We pass all that, we initialize our AI, and we go on to our server and say network server spawn the game object we have just instantiated and then UNet is going to handle everything else. And that's basically why we need to go on to our lobby manager again. Lobby manager and add this thing. Okay. So we are pretty much cover everything we need to cover for this. So we have, uh, you know, we have our enemy AI, we have single player AI, we've synced our enemy AI over the multiplayer, so this pretty much is almost a complete game. Okay, uh, we're still on port forwarding, and probably in the future we're going to see the, you know, set it up with matchmaking, so you do not have to go all and open the ports on your modem and all that. Okay, I'm going to leave this uh, as it is. We covered everything we need to cover in this. If there's any bug or anything else, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be something major. We've covered almost 90% of what, or even more, close to 95%, I believe, to what you are actually going to need in a game. Okay, so, on the next, uh, we'll see what we're going to do on the next uh, video, uh, yeah, on the next video about this series because we have covered so much. I want to keep this to add features to this, but I also want to keep this as a starting project for somebody that has to make, you know, that type of game and also want to learn uh, working with UNET and stuff all that. So, yeah, I'm not going to just piling on features okay yeah some some people suggested some stuff but we're going to a lot of specific uh, yeah it was it's pretty specific for a type of game and as I said I want to keep this a little bit more towards the generic uh, type of game well not as much as the generic uh, 2d and a gun uh, game can be of course okay but everything else you are going to add over it we've already see uh, so how you can add it so yeah this is a really good project to start working if you want to do a 2d game and have also multiplayer on it and have also everything else you might need okay we've seen so many techniques and yeah i do believe it's one of the best uh, projects I've already created. So, I'll end the video here. Okay, no more, no point dragging it anymore. Hit that like, subscribe if you like what I'm doing, what am I doing. And then consider supporting me on Patreon so, you know, I can continue working on all this stuff. And the other way you can support me also is by grabbing a project or two, including this one or gumroad so i'll see you next time